So here is the next question and this question has been asked in two parts. So let us see the first part. Differentiate between spermatogenesis and oogenesis on the basis of. There are three bases. First, time of initiation of the process. Second, site of completion of the process. Third, nature of meiotic division undergone by gamete mother cells. As this question carries five marks and here you can see that the answer is asked on three bases. So, you will get one mark for each character. So, let us see the answer to this question. Now, spermatogenesis and oogenesis are the processes of gamete formation in males and females respectively. So, the first point of the comparison between spermatogenesis and oogenesis is time of initiation of the process. In males, spermatogenesis starts at the age of puberty, while in females, it starts during embryonic development it starts before birth. The second point, site of completion of the process. The formation of sperms in males gets completed in seminiferous tubules, while in females, it starts in ovary but gets completed in fallopian tube. The next point is nature of meiotic division undergone by gamete mother cells. In males, it is equal cytoplasmic division which means it results into the formation of four equal sized cells and it is a continuous division. Unlike females where there is unequal cytoplasmic division that results into the formation of a large ovum and small polar body and it is a discontinuous process as the gamete gets arrested at prophase 1 and then in metaphase 2 at different periods of gametogenesis. So, you will get one mark for each point and in total you will get three marks for three points. The next part of this question is Name the hormones and state their role involved in controlling spermatogenesis in humans. So, the answer to this question is the hormones that are involved in controlling gametogenesis are first gonadotropin releasing hormone, second luteinizing hormone, third follicle stimulating hormone. The first hormone gonadotropin releasing hormone is a hypothalamic hormone which acts at anterior pituitary gland and stimulates the secretion of gonadotropins that is LH and FSH. While the second hormone LH this acts at the Leydig cells and stimulates the synthesis and secretion of male sex hormones that is androgens. Third, FSH is responsible for stimulating Sertoli cells to secrete some factors that help in the process of spermiogenesis. So, if you are going to name the hormones, you will get one mark and if you will state the functions, you will get another one mark. So, in total you will get 5 marks if you have attempted 3 comparative differences between spermatogenesis and oogenesis and 2 for the role of hormones in spermatogenesis. Let us see the next question. Now, I am going to discuss question number 25 and that to the or part because the other part of the question belong to zoology and this part is from botany. So, let us see this. This has got three parts, part A, B and C and this is a five marker question coming straight from the chapter sexual reproduction in angiospermic plants. So, here you see students part A first. Let us talk about it. The question says explain the process of double fertilization in angiosperms. Now, this part fetches you two marks. So, how do we write it? In angiosperm, two types of fusion do occur. Number one is syngamy and the other one is triple fusion that occurs in an embryo sac. Therefore, it is termed as double fertilization because two fusions are happening. Now, 
Number one, we will discuss in detail about syngamy. What is that? It is actually the fusion of male gamete and egg cell, which is the female gamete. That's known as syngamy. Now, this results in the formation of a diploid cell known as zygote. So, yes, you can see from the equation also, male gamete plus female gamete, which is the egg. Male is haploid, male gamete is haploid, female gamete is haploid and will produce a diploid zygote. Now, for writing syngamy, the first type of fertilization, first type of fusion will get one mark. Then we have triple fusion, the other kind of fusion. Now, here in triple fusion, three nuclei are participating, which is why the name triple fusion is given to it. So, here in triple fusion, second male gamete fuses with the nucleus of central cell, that is also known as secondary nucleus, to produce triploid primary endosperm nucleus shortly known as PEN. Now the central cell after triple fusion becomes primary endospermic cell shortly called as PEC. So which divides and develops later on into endosperm. Now here you can see here in the form of equation that male gamete which is haploid fuses with secondary nucleus which becomes diploid then turns into the formation of PEN that is primary endospermic nucleus which has a ploidy of 3N. So this will turn into endosperm and the above fusion which is syngamy turns into the formation of zygote and here also we are going to score one mark. So two marks for part A that is what I have said here we will get two out of two marks part A. Now moving further for part B. Part B says why does the development of endosperm precedes that of an embryo? Guys, this is a sort of adaptation. Why? See, endosperm development precedes embryo development because the cells of endosperms are filled with food, are filled with reserve food material and are used for the nourishment of developing embryo. So even before the embryo develops, it already has it waiting reserve food material on its way. Therefore, endosperm development happens prior embryo formation. And this is going to give us one mark. Moving further for part C, which is of two marks. List the parts of a typical dicot embryo. Now, a typical dicot embryo will comprise of number one, the embryonal axis. Embryonal axis is further divided into two parts. Number one is epicotyle and number two is hypocotyle. Remember, epi in biology always means above. Yes. So, above the portion of embryonal axis above the level of cotyledons will be known as epicotyle. Remember, epicotyle gives rise to plimule and plimule gives rise to shoot. Yes, it terminates into plimule. Now, hypocotyle, what is that? The portion of embryonal axis which is below, below the level of cotyledons unlike as in case of epicotyle which is above. So, here it will be below the level of cotyledons and terminates into radical. Remember, hypocotyle gives rise to radical and radical gives rise to roots. And apart from the embryonal axis, the other significant part of dicot embryo is the two cotyledons, hence the name dicot. So, these are lateral structures of the embryo usually contains reserve food. So, yes students, for writing correctly the embryonal axis, you will get one mark here and for writing two cotyledons which is the other part of the dicot embryo, you get another one mark. In totality, we will have two marks here. And if we go back to the question here, we have seen two marks for this, one marks for this and two marks for this. And in total, this is five out of five marks. Now, let us take up our next question.